Hey! Hey! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'll silver! Oh! Toward the middle of the 19th century, New Orleans was a city distinctive for its old world atmosphere. Creole aristocracy held sway, living in luxurious style. Their sumptuous homes bordered on streets which derived a rare but emphatic beauty from the rows of elms, magnolias, and willows, trees that long witnessed old-world intrigue and romance beneath their boughs. The French Creoles were very conservative in social life and standards. The old customs and styles of dress lingered later among them than in any other part of the country. It was dusk when the boat from St. Louis tied up at the wharf of New Orleans. Two men stood in the shadows of the upper deck watching. One was a stalwart Indian. The other, a white man of remarkable physique, whose features were concealed by a black mask. The famous masked rider of the West, the Lone Ranger. Plenty people in New Orleans. He must have been. The reason for so many people in the streets, Toto, because this is a special occasion. They're having what they call a Mardi Gras. Um, me not savvy Mardi Gras. Oh, it's a carnival. Sort of a big religious celebration the Creoles have introduced. But saying they're customary in France and Spain. I understand they're planning to have one here every year. Oh, and what people do in Carnival, Kimisali? Oh, they wear unusual clothes and put on masks. It's a time of revelry and fun for everybody. Captain Hillcrest and I arranged our arrival to coincide with this event so that my mask will attract attention. Ah, not good. You take papers to Captain tonight? Yes, we'll ride directly to Fort St. Philip. Ah, um, me not savvy one thing, Kimasavi. Oh, what is it, Toto? Why then not send soldier with papers from Fort back in Texas? And the papers are secret and important. No one would suspect me of carrying them. That's one reason why I volunteered to bring them here. Oh, and there other reason? Yes, Kimasavi. You, you remember, Toto, years ago when you found me? The only one of a band of rangers who survived an ambush, and you nursed me back to health? Uh-huh. One of those rangers was a very close friend, Bill Westcott. He was killed with the others. Uh, and that when you become Lone Ranger? Yes, Tonto. 
Bill Westcott told me he'd married a girl of the Creole aristocracy in New Orleans. Her father objected to the marriage, and Bill went west to make his way. He joined the Rangers. Him not take wife? No, before he had a chance to send for her, she died, leaving a son. I promised Bill if anything happened to him, I'd look up his son someday and tell him about his father. This is my chance to keep that promise. Yet not easy to find son in New Orleans. Well, I had word from Captain Hillcrest. There's a Lance Westcott living here on Bourbon Street. Lance is the name of Bill's son. Well, come on, Toto. We'll go below now and get Silver and Scout. We'll go ashore and head for Fort Phillip. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto, mounted on Silver and Scout, left the wharf, they were approached by a soldier on horseback. Oh, Silver, oh, boy. Oh, 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 I beg your pardon, sir, but aren't you on your way to Fort Phillip? Yes. Captain Hillcrest gave me your description. He sends his compliments and has directed me to escort you to the fort. I'm Lieutenant Field. Glad to meet you, Lieutenant. I didn't expect anyone to meet us, but we'll be very happy to have your company. Oh, uh, this is my friend, Tonto. How? Glad to meet you, Tonto. Now, if you'll follow me, we'll be on our way to the fort, sir. Thanks. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Get him As the three riders rode up the street, they failed to notice a carriage drawn up in the shadows beyond the wharf. On the off side of the carriage, two horsemen sat listening to directions given them by Pierre Beauvais who pointed through the carriage window at the retreating figure of the masked man on the great white stallion. That is the man I have been watching for. Through certain channels, I have learned he's carrying secret papers to Fort Philip. Get those papers. But, Monsieur Bouvet, they are three to our two. Take a shortcut. Head them off on the trail to Fort Philip. Find the spot from which to ambush them. Hurry. There's no time to be lost. If we take them by surprise, Paul, it should be easy. No one will notice your masks because of the Mardi Gras. I am going on to the Opera House, to the Grand Ball. Meet me there. Go now. Au revoir, monsieur. We'll meet you later. Come, Paul. Allez! The moon's coming up full and bright. Be just the right setting for the Mardi Gras tonight. You going, Lieutenant? No, oh, drat the luck. I'll be on duty tonight with every Creole beauty in New Orleans turning out for the Grand Ball. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Lieutenant Hurt, Kimasabi. Yes, uh, steady. Let's get him off uh, his horse, Tonto, uh, quick. Uh, shots come from clump of trees to let us. There. He's pretty badly hurt. All right, Tonto. Lay low until they fire again. There they are. If we hit one of them, come on. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Two men right away to left. Oh, Silver, hold. Oh, hold, Scout. Hold, Tonto, hold. Follow them, Tonto. I'll take the lieutenant onto the fort. Ah. I'll meet you later at the edge of town. Ah. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. The Lone Ranger took the wounded soldier to the fort. A short time later, he was at headquarters talking to Captain Hillcrest. Evidently, someone in New Orleans learned of my mission, Captain. No doubt. And there must have been someone with influence enough to have contacts in the West. The papers you brought would have been of interest to a foreign power. I see. I am sorry about Lieutenant Field. Yes, so am I. He's a fine chap and a good soldier. Oh, by the way, you wanted some information about Lance Westcott? Yes, sir. What do you know about him, Captain? Well, he's a nice enough young fellow in a way. Inclined to be hot-headed and spoiled. His grandfather, Louis Rouen, pampered the boy. The old man's dead now. Oh, I see. Lance lives with his grandmother on Bourbon Street. He's gone through what money they had. Right now, he's said to be courting Nanette Beauvais daughter of Pierre Beauvais, who has most of the money and power among the Creole aristocracy. People say Lance is heading for trouble. Why? Pierre Beauvais has already warned him to stay away from Nanette. So? Pierre Beauvais is a former fencing master. He's an expert duelist. 
If he ever put Lance Westcott in a position where he'd have to... Uh... Oh, yes, I understand. I've heard the dueling with rapiers is still a custom among the French Creoles the here. The Place d'Armes is still the scene of many a duel, my friend. And everyone fights shy of meeting Pierre Beauvais in combat. He must be quite an expert. About the best in the country, I guess. A boy like Lance Westcott wouldn't have a chance against him. Mm. I intend to look up Lance when I return to town tonight. You'll probably find him. <laughs> in fact, you'll find everybody at the old French opera house attending the grand ball. Now, since most of them go masked and in costume, this is one occasion upon which you can mix with the crowd without being concerned about your mask. <laughs> well, that's true, though. I... Well, Sergeant? Pardon, sir, but I came to report on Lieutenant Field. Well, what about the lieutenant? How is he? He's dead, sir. Dead? By thunder, they can't get away with that. We'll order out a company and scour the whole city of New Orleans. Oh, wait, we... Captain. Well? I'd like to suggest a better plan, if I may. Well, I... You may go, Sergeant. Yes, sir. What do you have in mind? Just this. My Indian friend, Tonto, followed the two men who ambushed us. He's going to meet me when I reach town. But, sir, My you... opinion that those two men were hired by someone higher up. I'd like to track him down, and I hope they'll lead me to him. Oh. Sounds like a good idea, and I quite agree with you when you say you think someone else is behind this. All right, my friend, see what you can do. If you need help, send word to me. Thank you, Captain. Well, I'll go now. I'll do my best to bring the murderers of the lieutenant to justice. Adios, Captain. Goodbye, and good luck. Oh. There's a man of action if I ever saw one. I'd sure hate to have him on my trail. He was happy. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Steady, big fella. What did you find out, Toto? I'm me, follow him. Then go to Opera House. I see. What else? Well, me watch him through window. Them talk to man who wear fancy clothes, have plenty white hair. Then you point them out to me, Toto. Ah, me take good look at them. Come on, then. Uh, what we do, Kimasabi? Toto, Lieutenant Field is dead. You and I are going to the Mardi Gras ball to hunt his murderers. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. corner behind some palms, two young people stood talking in low tones amid the gaiety of the Mardi Gras Grand Ball. Nanette, you're the most beautiful girl at the ball. I want you to dance with me. Oh, Lance, it would not be wise. We must not let Papa see us together. Oh, come on. He won't notice us in this crowd. Oh, no, Lance, we dare not. We must be careful Papa does not see us talking here. He's wearing a colonial costume and white wig. Watch for him. <laughs> I'm too busy watching you, Nanette. Perhaps if your father gets used to me being with you, he'll change his mind about me. Papa is not one to change his mind. He is so quick of temper, Lance. I'm afraid I will not be able to... Oh, oh this is where you are hiding, little Nanette. I have been... Monsieur Westcott. Oh, please, Papa, don't. Have I not told you to keep away from Nanette? Really, Monsieur Beauvais, there's no need to... You have gone too far. It is only because of her money that you press your attention upon Annette. You are an upstart and a cad, monsieur. Now, see here. You can't... There. I give you my glove. In your impudent face, monsieur. He struck Westcott with his glove. He cannot take that. That, monsieur Beauvais, is an insult. Lance. Lance, do Well, monsieur Lance Westcott. Very well, monsieur Beauvais. I challenge you to a duel at dawn with pistols. Yes. <laughs> uh, attende, monsieur. Since you have challenged me, it is my privilege to select the weapons. Of course, monsieur. Oh, Lance, you cannot do this. You must not. Quiet, Nanette. C'est bien, monsieur Westcott. We shall meet at dawn tomorrow with rapiers. Oh, yeah. My Lance won't have a chance. Oh, they has never lost the duel. As you say. With rapiers, Monsieur Buffet. With rapiers. And to the best. Yes, 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Unnoticed by the crowd that had gathered about Pierre Beauvais and young Westcott, the Lone Ranger and Tonto listened attentively to the heated words that passed between the two men. Lance Westcott left the group, followed by Beauvais and his daughter. It was then that Tonto spoke. Kimosabe, there man with white hair, him one who talked with killers. Beauvais, man with a wig. Are you sure, Tonto? Ah, oh, me sure. Mm, I see. Well, we've already spotted the other two. No doubt they'll be with him at the duel in the morning. Kimosabe, yes. you take six guns, round up killers at duel place, save young Westcott feller, and take them all to share. No, no, Tonto. I'm afraid that wouldn't work. It would be your word against theirs. Beauvais is a very influential man here. Furthermore, according to their code of honor, Westcott would be in disgrace. Now, and what we do? First, I'm going to Westcott's home on Bourbon Street and have a talk with him. After that, we'll make our plans. Lance Westcott went to his home. He sat staring into the night through the open French window as he nervously ran his hand through his dark, curly hair. He turned as a servant entered the room. Well, what is it? Someone to see you all, sir. I don't want to see anyone right now. Tell them I'm not home. It is all right, Lance. I had to come. Nanette. Yes, I, I left the ball without Papa knowing. I must hurry back. Lance, you must not go through with this. There's no way out of it, Nanette. Well, you can refuse to go through with the duel. That would mean disgrace, Nanette. You know that. Oh, you men and your so-called code of honor. What can you gain by this duel? You will be killed. And if by chance you are not, then I... Oh, Lance, do you not see? He's my father. I, I could never I'm forget sorry, enough. Lynette. You could leave New Orleans tonight. Go away until the whole thing is forgotten. Be branded a coward? No, that would never do. But Papa forced you into this. You know you cannot handle a rapier, and he is an expert. Yes. Yes, I know. If there was only some way to stop it. I... I feel so helpless. You... You'd better go back now, Nanette. There's nothing to be done. But Lance, I... Oh, Lance! <laughs> well... Yes, that's our goodbye. May I come in? What? I didn't mean to startle you, Lance. You know me? Why do you come in through the French window? I know of you. I came in that way because I wanted to be sure to talk to you. Well, you're in. You can take off that mask. I prefer to keep it on. You see, I always wear it. Always wear it? I thought you were part of the Mardi Gras crowd. You're in trouble, Lance. I came to help you. You came to help me? Why? One of my best friends was named Bill Westcott. My father? Yes, your father, Lance. Texas Ranger. This... This is all so strange. Lance, I know about the duel. You haven't a chance against Beauvais. I know that. But it's a case of honor. It will be a case of murder if you go through with it. But what can I do? There's no way that I can avoid it. Yes, there is a way. The code of dueling permits a friend to champion the cause of one who is unequally matched. Yes. But no one would offer to take my place against an expert like Beauvais. I'll take your place, Lance, for personal reasons. You? No. No, I couldn't let you do it. You love Nanette, do you not? I, uh... Yes. Yes, I do. That, too, is a point against you in this duel. You wouldn't try to win against her father. I realize that, I, but still... Uh, I want to discuss a few details 
and we'll say no more about it. I'll meet Beauvais at the appointed place at dawn tomorrow. Just before dawn the following morning, a closed carriage moved swiftly along the road toward the dueling grounds and the Place d'Arms. Inside sat three men, all wearing long black cloaks. The face of one of them was covered with a black mask. I still think this is rather foolhardy in your part, my friend. He's doing it for me, Captain. Not alone for you, Lance. Captain Hillcrest knows what I mean. Yes, I do know. I got your message and came to meet you. But knowing what an expert Beauvais is with the rapier... That's my worry, Captain. I mustn't know you're in the carriage. Remember that. You'll know when to act. You say, Tanto, my men are to be nearby? Yes. They left soon enough to reach a group of low-hanging willows. They won't be seen by Beauvais and his party. I, uh, I had Tano take Silver with him so that Beauvais and his two friends wouldn't recognize me as I rode up. They might have run off. They certainly shouldn't recognize you in those clothes. Though they might question the mask. I've already explained to Beauvais' seconds that my champion decides to remain incognito. Good. Now, we're arriving at the dueling grounds. I'll go ahead and attend to the necessary formalities. Good. I see we'll have a small group of witnesses. So, this is the um, gentleman who is to take your place, Wescott, huh? Yes, monsieur. I shall act as his second. Mm. I did not think you had such a loyal friend. Well, after I have the pleasure of running him through, we will have a look at his face. I don't think you'll have the chance to remove my mask, Beauvais. Let's get on with the duel. Paul, bring the rapiers. Here they are, monsieur. You may have your choice, monsieur mask man. Thank you. You will remove your cloak and your tunic, monsieur. I'll help you. All right, thanks. <laughs> Uh, I'm ready. Attende. On guard. On guard, monsieur. I said I'm ready. Then fight, monsieur mask man. Fight for your life. <laughs> the slanting rays of the rising sun fell upon the rippling muscles that moved beneath the smooth bronze skin of the mighty rider of the plains. His magnificent physique had drawn exclamations from the onlookers when he removed his tunic. Now, as he thrust and parried, turning cold death aside with a quick movement of the wrists, they stared in open-mouthed wonderment. His dexterity of movement as he turned point to point, his calm yet deadly method of attack, showed Beauvais only too well that he'd met his match. What? You... You will not last, monsieur. That remains to be seen. To say, the masked man drew blood. Backward and forward, lunging and fainting, the combat went on. The sneer had long since left Beauvais's face. Panic was fast appearing in his eyes. He looked at his unknown adversary, watched with dawning wonderment the rhythmic movement of his broad, glistening shoulders, watched with fascination the easy grace with which he directed every thrust, moving into attack with a nimbleness and skill Beauvais had never before seen. All the learning and skill at his command seemed of no avail. Sweat rolled from his forehead, momentarily blinding him. Panic and rage welled up inside of him as he tried to beat off the ever-increasing thrust of the masked man before him. The onlookers watched, spellbound. Then Beauvais, throwing all caution to the wind, lunged in a mighty effort to beat down the un- Unbelievable apparition before him. With a quick, swift movement, the Lone Ranger parried the thrust. Then, with a sudden thrust and side blow, struck Bobby's sword hand. At the same time, flipping Bobby's rapier from his hand, sending it flying in two pieces off to the side. Bobby is done for. The masked man's going to run him through. Immediately, the Lone Ranger placed the point of his rapier against the chest of the man kneeling before him. No, no, monsieur. Do not take my life. According to your code, your life is mine to take it will. Oui, oui, monsieur. What I beg of you. I'll spare your life on one condition, Bobby. Oui, monsieur, of course. Just tell me. Confess to the attack upon the soldier, his two companions last night. But I, I did not take part in the attack. I swear it. And who did? Answer me, Earl. Those two men over there, Paul and Jean. The soldier was killed. They murdered him. They did it. No, he paid us to do it. Obey is to blame as well as us. Only you will not get us. Hold it. You're covered. Good work, Captain. And she can signal Tunnel to come over now. Just wave your arm. I know he's watching. Here are your six guns, my friend. Thanks, Captain. These will be your prisoners. Here comes Tonto with some of my boys. We've had plenty of witnesses to Beauvais' confession. Oh, 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 oh. You all right, Kimasabi? Yes, Tonto. The Beauvais here gave me quite a workout. All right, men. Get these men into their carriage and escort them to the city jail. Yes, sir. Come on, you. Get into that carriage. Please, you took a beating. I'll help you with your tunic, sir. Thank you. 
Now, my gun belt, please. I don't know how to thank you, sir, for what you've done. Don't try, Lance. All I ask is that you try to be the kind of a man your father was. Do you think if I went west, I could join... Join well, the Texas Rangers like your dad did? That's right. Well, you might try. I'd like to make one suggestion, Lance. What's that? I see a carriage coming. I think it's bringing someone... someone you want to see. My suggestion is this. If you do go west, don't leave a wife behind you. <laughs> I won't. If I have my way, I'll bring one with me. Here, Silver. <laughs> Ready, Tonto? Uh, you're ready. Come on. Come on, Silver. Lance. Lance, what has happened? Your father's gone into town, Nan. You'll see him there, and he'll tell you everything. Oh, Lance, I, I am so glad you're safe. It's all due to that man on the white horse. I want you oh, to be... Oh, Silver, come on. Come on, wait. Who is he, Lance? Do you know? To me, he's the greatest man that ever lived, Nan. He's known as... The Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.